Today we're going to be talking about how to use an infinite series to evaluate an indefinite integral. And in this particular problem, we've been given the indefinite integral x times cosine of the quantity x cubed dx. And we've been asked to evaluate this integral using an infinite series. Now, as a reminder, I've written the formula for the infinite series of cosine of x. We're going to be using that in order to find our integral. The first thing that we need to notice is that this formula for cosine of x expressed as an infinite series is just cosine of x, right? This simple x value here. In our integral, not only do we have cosine of x cubed here, not just x, but x cubed, but we also have this additional value here, x multiplied by this trigonometric identity cosine. So our function is different in two ways than this formula is here. So the first thing we're going to deal with is this x cubed. Then we're going to go back and deal with this x. So in order to deal with the x cubed, all we need to do is find this value here of x inside of our infinite series and then swap it out for x cubed. So you can see here in our infinite series, the only x value is right here. We need to switch this out for x cubed. So in order to express cosine of x cubed, all we say here, we can say cosine of x cubed is equal to the infinite series from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n. And here's where we swap out our x cubed. So we'll plug in x cubed for that x raise that to the 2n, which comes from right here, and then divide that by the quantity 2n factorial. Now, one quick side note, I had the formula here for cosine of x, which was similar to our indefinite integral, our, our integral function up here. Now, I pulled this from a table of common Maclaurin series, right? Cosine of x, sine of x, e to the x, common functions like that. You should know the infinite sum of its Maclaurin series, and that's what I have here. This is an extremely common function. If you're not dealing with a common function and you don't have this infinite sum of the Maclaurin series in a table that you can pull from or you don't have this formula, what you need to do is take your function here and find the infinite sum. Basically, you need to find this value right here, the infinite sum. And the way that you could do that is by expanding this, plugging in values, you know, n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and writing out the sequence and trying to find this formula for the general term. Either way, you need to express this series as an infinite sum. Once you find this infinite sum value, this, this formula here, then you can go ahead and use that in the integral. We already have that, so we're just going to modify it to include, like we said, this x cubed and the x, and then once we do, we can integrate both sides and we'll be able to evaluate the integral using the infinite series. So back to where we were, we plugged in x cubed in place of x. So now we have an infinite series expression for cosine of x cubed. But our function is x times cosine of x cubed. So we need to multiply here both sides by x. And that just looks like this, right? We get x times cosine of x cubed. And over here on the right side, we multiply this whole thing by x. In other words, x is in front of this infinite sum notation here. So how do we integrate that x into our function here, this negative 1 to the n, x cubed to the 2n over 2n factorial? Well, since they're multiplied together, this is just, right, x to the first power here. And inside of our infinite sum, we have x to the third raised to the 2n, which actually is x to the 6n. When you have two things that are multiplied together and they have like bases, and what that means is they both have a base of x, right? This is x to the 6n with a base x. X. This is x to the first with a base x. When you have like bases and they're multiplied together, you can add their exponents to one another, and thereby combining the two terms. So we add their exponents together and we get x to the 6n plus 1, and that's how we combine them. So what we end up with is x times cosine of the quantity x cubed is equal to the infinite sum from n equals 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n, here's where we combine and we have x raised to the 6n plus 1 power, all divided by the quantity 2n factorial. Now at this point, now that we don't have anything hanging out in front of our infinite sum notation, we can go ahead and integrate both sides. All that means is that we're going to draw this integral notation here 
on both sides. We're going to integrate both sides. We don't have to worry about the left hand side because that's what we're trying to find, right? The integral of x times cosine of x cubed. So we just leave the left hand side as it is. We say the integral of x times cosine of the quantity x cubed and we can go ahead now and add that dx because we added integral notation. We should do that on both sides on this step if we're really being technical. So dx is going to be equal to the integral of this right hand side. Now before we take the integral, what we want to do is remove everything from inside this, this infinite sum notation. We want to take out the infinite sum notation and anything inside of it that is not related to x. And, and all I mean by that is if we have an identity like here, we have negative one to the n, there's no x value involved there, right? It's multiplied by x to the six n plus one, but it doesn't have an x value involved inside of it, which means it can be treated as a constant because we're treating n as a constant, no matter what value of n we plug in, it's always going to be some constant. So this negative one to the n, because it doesn't involve an x, can be considered a constant and can therefore be pulled out in front of our integral. Same thing goes for the quantity 2n factorial, that can be pulled out in front of our integral. All we want to leave inside the integral is values inside this infinite sum that involve x. So what we end up with here is the infinite sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n over the quantity two n factorial times the integral of x to the six n plus one dx. So notice that all we have left inside here is any term that involves x. Everything out in front here didn't involve x, so we, we pulled it out in front. It only involved n, which is a constant. Now that we've gotten this far, all we need to do is evaluate this integral, and this integral may look more complicated than it actually is. All we need to do, just as with power rule, we add one to the exponent and then divide this whole thing by the new coefficient. So 6n plus one, plus one when we add one to the exponent is 6n plus two. So our integral here is gonna be, and we can just make this our new right hand side, right? It's gonna be the infinite sum from n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n over the quantity 2n factorial, and our integral now, we get x to the 6n plus two in the, in the numerator, so x to the 6n plus two, and then we divide by our new exponent. So our new exponent is 6n plus two, we divide by that, and then because we've taken the integral, we can't forget to add c, the constant of integration. So we go ahead and add c to the right hand side. And that's it. This is the integral of x times cosine of the quantity x cubed expressed as an infinite sum.